Rivals has come a long way since 2014 in terms of the world ether and the character designs. Online can still be quite abysmal at times, but hey, the world of Ether is coming along nicely. Today, I want to share my top 5 list of character reveals. Before we get started, feel free to hit that subscribe button to get notifications when I post new videos. Also, follow me on my Twitch and other social media down in the description below. Without further ado, welcome to techmojo.com, and this is the top 5 character reveals. Grabbing the number 5 spot and humming it into the blast zone is Edelus. No matter how much glue Edelus mains eat, or how many times you call him me glue eater, big heavy dumb idiot. There is one trend that Edelus started, and that's grabs. Hey Tech, it's it's like a command grab, so it's different. I don't care if it's a pick up lightly and toss into the blast zone, it's still a grab. Dan told us there were no grabs in the game, but what is this? As it turns out, Dan is a pathological liar, because we just kept getting more characters with more grabs. Hell, we even had Craig get an update where he could grab his rock in the air. Wait, hold on Tech, w what about the fact that Dan has gone against the grain of traditional heavies in fighting games and made him fast as long as you use ice? You can also combo more than traditional heavy characters too. Hey, shut the hell up. I'm focusing on the lies that Dan's told us. I'm trying to expose him. Coming in at number 4 is Ori, and oh look. There's Dan lying about grabs, again. Ori was actually a big deal for the Rivals community because it opened up a door of possibilities of big indie game characters potentially getting into Rivals and exposing those fan bases to our game and vice versa. Think about it, how many of you watching this video right now didn't play Ori in the Blind Forest until you saw Ori's reveal trailer because you either never heard of Ori before, or you wanted to learn more about the character from its original game, and playing it got you even more excited for Ori's release in Rivals. This also lined up perfectly when the reveal trailer dropped back on June 13th, 2017, because two days before the reveal was the new Ori and the Will of the Wisp teaser trailer at E3, which got fans pretty hyped up. Ori's reveal trailer also started the increase in quality of the trailers, like with Forsburn and Maple fighting in the opening of the reveal. Ori also continues the trend of grabs, except this time anything and everything can be thrown in whatever direction you so choose with Ori's bash ability. Projectiles, characters, your hopes and dreams, all into the blast zone and down into the endless abyss. The number 3 spot? It goes to Sylvanos. This character was huge for a few reasons. Reason 1, he's a wolf and it's badass. Reason 2, Sylvanos didn't have a grab and everyone let out a sigh of relief. Finally, Dan has calmed down with the grabs and we can get back to just playing Rivals of Aether without grabs. Reason 3, which is probably the most important reason, we learn a little about the history of Aether as we take a peek into the past thanks to the narration of Granny May. We now know a little more about how Aether got to where it is today thanks to the Age of Fire, aka the Fire Nation, I mean Empire, the Fire Empire. Sylvanos may indeed be a wolf and the heart of the forest, but the later patches beat and abused him into a small puppy under cardiac arrest after Dan was done with him. Does Dan actually love animals? Because, uh, his patch notes prove otherwise. I think as of right now, Sylvanos is in a good spot as a character, but he's not nearly as broken as when he first came out. You know, I could see a play of Sylvanos asking Dan to add a grab into his kit, and after being told no, he would go back underground into the forest as a sad pupper singing the Little Mermaid's Part of Your World. Then, later, Dan would meet with Sylvanos dressed as Ursula, and doesn't grant him a wish of having a grab but instead nerfs him beyond belief. And then at the end, Dan would look into the crowd with an evil sinister voice saying, Sorry little one, not all stories have a happy ending. And then the curtains would just close. Alright, you know how earlier I said finally Dan has calmed down with the grabs and we can get back to just playing Rivals of Aether without grabs? Well, that was until Eliana showed up and grabs your ass with a chain. This grab right here, this was the biggest grab of all. Have you seen the range? It's like Dan purposely made the grab range longer to make up for the lost time since Sylvanos didn't have a grab. Eliana, the snack in the mech. Her story is an interesting one, and her reveal was the longest of the reveal trailers because they had a story to tell. Eliana is a snake, but she wants to fly like the birds in the Aramata. She tries, she fails, and then meets a rabbit named Ayala. They build a mech together, but it overheats quickly. Then Eliana puts weapons on the mech without telling Ayala and then tells her she will destroy the Aramata for doing her wrong. Now why is this trailer important? The short answer is more lore. When you look at the reveal trailer you notice a few things aside from Eliana the character. 
first, this trailer is in a comic book format. And as many of you now know, Rivals will be getting a comic book series in 2021. So this basically started the idea of the comic series. Second, the trailer continues to build the current world of Ether. We see the Aramata hanging near the desert and the cliffs, training their new recruits. Then we see that near the desert is the city of Julesvale, and we get a small tour of the city before Eliana decides to take out all of her rage on the Aramata for mocking her. Okay, so you see how the more overheat Eliana has, the harder she shoots out of her cannon? Her overheat mechanic is probably an analogy to how angry she is in her reveal trailer. In the beginning, she's smiling and she's full of hopes and dreams. But by the end of it, she's just so full of rage, rage, effing rage. Is this a hidden meaning of Dan being fed up with us laughing at him and blaming him and telling him to fix this or that? Am I the next target? Is this why we don't have more Rivals YouTubers? Has Dan just erased them from existence with an overheated Eliana up tilt? Maybe I should quit now and run before he can get a hold of me. Nah, I got the rest of this video to finish. Finally, number one. Who is number one, you may be asking? Number one is none other than Stefan and Adam Kara. This was the absolute biggest reveal during the second Rivals Direct. Seeing that Stefan made it into Rivals and that you can play as an alternate skin of Adam through the Milestone system was great. The best part is that the Milestone system is free! But you gotta earn it! Now don't you dare think that Adam, Kara, and Stefan don't have a grab. Because they do. They most definitely do. The first video I saw of Adam's was the Mabel video, and it grabbed my attention. But as it progressed, he grabs your attention quicker and quicker. The Japanese trailer, the Working Plush video, even grabbing the Smash scene's attention with the new Wave Dash video that can be found in the description of this video. It's out of control. He's out of control. He's mad with power. And who gave him that power, you ask? None other than Dan Fernese. I just sat there and thought about it. Something must have happened when Dan got a hold of Adam when he did the first Rivals Direct, right? He just kept getting better and better and better at grabbing your attention. He must have signed some deal with Devil Dan. Wh where, where, where do I sign up? I, I want an overpowered grab too. Not just in game, but in life. Like the best Adam Kara. He's got the best grab. The attention grab. Throwing everyone else out of the way to get that number one spot is Claren. Claren was in the first combo DLC pack, and her, along with Rano, were the Melee-esque characters. When Smash players got to see that these characters were major references to Sheik and Marth, some of them became more interested in playing the game. Claren's reveal trailer started the trend of showing more about the world of Ether. Claren shows the future, Silvano showed the past, and Eliana showed the present. Claren goes back to the past to fix the future since Emperor Loxodon ruined everything about the Fire Empire. Also. Claren wears a mask, and this is a reference to how Forsburn wears a skull. She's also a panther, just like Forsburn's mentor. This means that in the future, we've evolved from the days of wearing the skulls of our enemies. Claren's future is set in the timeline of 3D Rivals. Rivals isn't pixel art anymore. Yay, us! We've officially upgraded from NES graphics! In the future, Rivals no longer runs on Windows 95 dial-up, like it's online play some of the times. No longer shall we have to worry about someone being on the house phone as we attempt to check out AOL Messenger to see if anyone got their email about the future DLC. You've got mail. So with all that being said, we have a future at least until 2023, according to the expanding Ether trailer. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. This foolishness. Who approved this? Did you know that Claren can throw out a grab and suffer no consequences whatsoever? You could parry her, but what good does that do for you when she doesn't even go in a stunt? Cool! <laughs> I love this game! <laughs> that was fair and balanced! It goes without question that Dan loves his grabs. Dan wants grabs in the game because he very well may be thinking of how much he would like to force us to continue to play his game. Chain grabbing with Claren is just another analogy. Think about it this way. Just like how I said earlier that through Adam's videos he was given the ability to grab our attention by the power of Dan, Dan has grabbed our attention repeatedly through the years with new flashy things that he's added into Rivals. He starts with putting wave dashing in right away because he knows how all you kids love your wave dashes. Then he's like, hey, look at all these other cool things that I added. Whiff lag, hit canceling, story mode, abyss mode, custom colors, turbo mode, DLC, workshop, the promise of a definitive edition. He's done it over and over and over. In this analogy, we're just an innocent Orcane living our best life, and he's the Claren that's just throwing us left and right until he feels like we've had enough. Thanks for watching. Do I really think Dan is some devil slash demon that can control you? No. Unless... 
I mean, if this video blows up, then you'll know that I too have also signed a deal with Devil Dan. And I think that'll be proof enough. Alright, if I grabbed your attention at any point throughout this video, much like all these broken characters, be sure to leave a like and comment that you got chain grabbed until the outro. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day, everyone.